Well, good morning and happy new year. Hey, let's all stand and join together in worship. Have a seat. Go ahead and have a seat. We've got a couple of announcements. Man, if y'all can't get hyped up after a song like that, what's wrong with you? I mean, come on. Open up the floodgates. That's what we want to see, right? That's right. Amen. Amen. So just a couple of quick announcements real quick. The youth will be selling candy bars outside after the service. Make sure you stop by and get you some of that good old chocolate if you want to butter up the pastor. That's a great way to do it. Uh, but uh, we will be selling candy bars out there. Also, the youth will be going snow tubing next Sunday after church, and so if they are going to be a participant of that, I need them to sign up by this Wednesday night. It's $30 a student. Uh, we do have an option to pay online now, so you can get that link off of our Hija app. If you're a part of the student ministry, you can see that on there, um, or they can meet me and they can get me the money as well. But the, uh, the closing date for that is the, se uh, 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 this is the 7th, sorry, it is the 10th, the Wednesday night, the 10th, so I have to have them signed up and ready to go for that. Speaking of Wednesday nights, we've got some amazing men's and women's Bible studies 
They're getting ready to kick off. The men will be with the men, and the women will be with the women. Uh, we have to, that's going to also start on January the 10th, so make sure that you sign up at the welcome desk for that. You do not want to miss. There's nothing more special than sitting around with a group of men just talking about men's stuff, right? Right? Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> y'all are really excited about that. I don't know about the women's stuff. Y'all can do whatever y'all want to do with that, but, you know, I just, I think that sounds amazing. Also, uh, we do have a marriage retreat coming up. That's February 16th to the 18th. The cost of that is $160, which is due February the 11th, and that includes your food and your stay as well. If you plan to go, please sign up on the official list. We've had a list out there before, but make sure that you stop by and you get your name on that list. We do have limited spots available. Continuing back with Wednesday nights, we're also needing some help in our nursery we're needing some help in our nursery, and when I know when you hear that, you're like, man, I don't want to be stuck in the nursery every Wednesday night, but if we get enough people together, we can do it to where you only have to serve occasionally, and so we're really looking for help so that, that the, the women and the men can get into these men and women's Bible studies, and then their kids are taken care of, and they don't have to be worried about that. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet at the welcome desk for that as well. We have our base classes coming up, the 102 uh, the 101, 201, 301, and 401 would be offered. These are spiritual development classes. Uh, you finish all of them, and you get a very special coin, um, and it's really, really cool. But those are really cool. I just started taking them the last time they were offered, and uh, I was in a class with Pastor Dave, and it was not good to have two ADHD people in there together. Um, but it, it went great, and it was very, very well, and I, I highly encourage you to get in and be a part of that. And the last thing we want to tell you guys about is we do have our annual business meeting coming up, and that'll play, take place on Sunday the 28th, and that'll be directly after church. But now is probably one of my favorite times because if you all would, we're going to go ahead and stand, and we're going to get back into worship. But the one thing I want to do is I just want to take just a second because that was a lot of information. I just want everybody to bow your heads and close your eyes for just a second. And I just want you to clear your hearts and minds. I want you to get ready for what we're about to do. Don't think about what's going on after church today. Don't think about your busy schedules that's going on for the rest of the week. But I want you to just focus in on Jesus and the true reason that we're here this morning. Focus in on his love for you. Focus in on his, his compassion for you. Guys, sometimes we just need to stop and sit in your presence. Father, I feel you. I feel you here right now. Man, you're, you're hitting me with a wave. You're getting me pumped. You're getting me energized. And God, I pray that you spread out through this entire congregation this morning. God, get us ready. Get us ready for what you have for us this morning. God, prepare our hearts and our minds for what you're about to do. God, I pray that you come through this place this morning and do what only you can do. Father, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, a couple other worship announcements. If anybody, we need some tablets for the worship team so we can see our music instead of the heavy sheet music. So if anybody has old ones like laying in your drawers that you're never going to use, if you could... Um, Clear your data and send them to us. We'll double check, make sure your data is clear, and utilize them for the praise team. I know probably a few people in here have some old technology tablets that, that you could spare, so I'd love you to share them. Also, we're in need of new musicians for our praise team in general, especially bass players and um, keyboards often. So uh, if anybody's interested or knows somebody who doesn't even have a church, they say, hey, you know, there's a place for you to play. Uh, have them get in contact with, with any of us. Um, I'm certainly willing to te help teach anybody who's interested in, in beginning to as well. So on that note, let's keep this worship going. Blessed be your name in land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in this desert. 
place I walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes in Lord, still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name. When the sun's shining down on me. When the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. There is pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the dark is in Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name. The Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. Even when darkness closes in, I know that's sometimes what we, we need to say. And um, as many of you know, my wife, Christy, was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer last spring and given four to six months to live. And one of our conversations we had was, I can't believe we're never going to have another Christmas together as a family. And here she is, standing, give her wave. <laughs> Praise God. But, you know, we all go through trials, and I can tell you that almost everybody on our praise team, as we prayed earlier today, is going through something. We're all facing some challenge across the spectrum, or whatever, the, whatever those challenges could be. Um, but one thing Christy and I, and, and Natalie and our other daughter, Caroline, have found is that in going through that crisis, when we face those darkest days, it is our faith that brought us incredible peace and joy that was unexplainable. We've never been so happy just in spite of this. So praise be to God and just the church as a whole for, for the impact it can have on everybody's life. So 
This next song is, is a, a new one uh, for our church, but um, it's one that it would be easy for you to sing along with by the time we get halfway through it. But um, it's called Firm Foundation, and that's kind of, we build our foundation on God, and that enables us to receive these blessings that he pours out on us in these times of trouble. So I'm sure it's something everybody in this room can identify with. So. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why? Christ 
to that song this morning on our way here knowing we'd be singing it today and the more I listen I love the he won't part I just love that you, you think about what could happen but he's won't he won't fail us he won't leave us he'll the Bible says he never leaves us never forsake us and we're just so thankful for that I always encourage you today and every day to pray one for another you never know what those next you are going through if you see folks that aren't here today that normally are pray for them send them a note and let them know you have no idea maybe what's going on in their life. Uh, you know, even the worship team, Bill had mentioned, you know, what they've been through, their family, and appreciate he and Natalie up here. And just thinking today, you know, Christy Parks is going to sing today, and she's homesick, not feeling well. And, you know, we see Aubrey and her family who lost her Nana this week, and it's been a tough week for them. Uh, Buck back here, he always has a little ringing in the ears, but he does a little bit today. <laughs> He's struggling. And I just think, you know, we see people every day, but everybody's going through something most of the time. And so let's keep that in mind when we around people, we love people, we see people, pray for them. We have no idea. Sometimes just our prayer for them or a pat on the back is so encouraging. We have a few more. A lot of you know uh, Mac and Linda Brown. They usually sit over here to my left or sometimes back there. But I pray for them. He's in the hospital and I see you. Um, you know, Terry and Dougie Yeager, which is Mike and Paige's neighbor, please pray for them today. I, I touched base with her this morning. You know, they're going through a lot with her husband's health. And Jennifer Watson just told me their sister-in-law is in the hospital. And I always, again, pray one for another. And we always like to give you the opportunity to come be anointed. I, I believe in the power of this. It's neat how sometimes I have people come to me later and say, we were, we were prayed over that week. And they'll call me the next week. I just want you to know what happened or God honored this or this occurred. And just always appreciative of that. So if you'd like to come be anointed as we sing this again, you're welcome to come down now. Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaking Father, we sure love you today. And I just love to see when people come and how people just gather around them. God, today we're praying for health of some, for friends, for family, for some of them here today. Safe travels as some go to be with family during difficult times. We pray for continued healing in those today. We pray for the requests mentioned. Some have friends who have difficult health issues or family. We pray to work in each one the way you know best. We pray, God, uh, for the specific situations. You know what they are. That's the beauty of you. You know them. You know the situation. You tell us that you know even the, 
the, the numbers of hair in our head. You know everything about us. And God, I pray you would go ahead of each person. Thank you for those coming forward today to be prayed over, that you would just use them as a vessel maybe in their own life to, to help those they're praying for. Maybe God help us around here today that we could do our part in reaching out and helping others. And God, I always thank you for our children today uh, as they're doing their thing up in Children's Church. God, be with Pastor Chris and, and Tara and Megan. I'll just work with them to surround them today. God, be with our bridge ministry. I saw them go back. I love that ministry. Always pray for them. Be with our youth, God. Pray for those we mentioned, God, Mac and Linda. Be with Mac's health. Just take care of him today. And, and the Fazier family, just so appreciated getting to know them this week and just surround them with the loss of their you know, mom and Nana. God, Terry and Doug Yeager, be with them. Jennifer, uh, their sister-in-law, and God, just surround them. God, we just love you. Be with each one who's sick today or struggling today. Most of all, may we look to you at all times and understand who you are and allow you to take root in our life in a way that's pleasing to you. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. I just want to get in a little bit today. Today, uh, it's always good. So, you know, if you're in church today, you know what that means? You have perfect attendance for 2024. You have not missed a Sunday all year. That's something you can say. I'm just telling you that. So it's a little encouragement that you can tell me I have perfect attendance this year. It's always a good thing. Uh, just a few uh, reminders. They mentioned the, the men's Bible study. I was looking through that some this week. It's going to be really good. Uh, it's funny because today we're kind of talking about the challenge for this year and challenges we have as individuals. And the men's Bible study is called Kingdom Men Rising. But the first part of that, the lesson for this week, is chosen for the challenge. You know, that's why we're here a lot, that God uh, encourages us to, to be what he wants us to be. Uh, we're having a, something different. Tyson, we're hosting a pickleball tournament this week. I think we have almost 40 teams in it, and uh, so this this Saturday, so Tyson, raise your hand over here somewhere, where are you? If you want to help volunteer with that, we have some, but he had probably a little more teams to go a little longer than probably expected. He'd love to have people come by, help with registration or selling snacks or those type of things, or if you just decide you're a great pickleball player and want to play, that, that too. Uh, you mentioned our marriage retreat coming up. And we're doing our best to make that very, it's 160. I know it's a little bit of money, but we try to make it very reasonable. That's two nights and all the things with it. Uh, if you want to go and can't afford it, that's okay too. Just let us know. We'll make sure you get to go. And our main thing is if you're in a marriage and you feel that's just something healthy you would love to do as a couple, don't let that part get in your way. We'll make sure we'll take care of it. And maybe you can't go, but want to sponsor a couple. That's another thing. It, we can take 20, I think 21 total couples is what they have room for. We have about 12 or 13 signed up. Uh, so we'd love for you to come and be a part of that. Uh, again, it's at, our, it's at our camp down in, what, what's, where, what's the name? I always forget the name. Olympia, Olympia Four Seasons. It has like three names. Uh, but, but be with it. Uh, I, hope, I hope you can come. Again, it's a, it's a great place. I say the word camp, but you're not in a tent. It, it is like a hotel type room. Somebody asked. I heard the word "camp" with it. I said, "You can't. If you can take a tent, I mean, if you want, you're welcome. But indoor plumbing, the whole nine yards. It's a big thing. Uh, but it really is a, a nice place. I just love it. So think a lot about this year. Today we're, we are going to kick off a little bit about it's a challenge this year uh, of how we can all be better, do better individually as a church. So I was walking through through Walmart this week and I saw something that made me stop and look. As I was walking by, I saw a, a big stack, you know, New Year's, they have New Year's stuff. It said, smart scales. Like, I said, the only thing I know is smart for me right now not to get on scales. I mean, that's what I know. After eating and Christmas and New Year, I am not getting on them. But by beginning to look, what does a smart scale do? Does it tell me what I want to hear and not really what it's, I should? You know, that would be smart for me personally. But when I began to read, I looked online and said, what does a smart scale do? It made me interested. And it, there's so many things. It actually does tell you your weight, which, you know, that's what it's supposed to do. But it began to have a list of what different scales can do. It, it, said it can measure your body fat percentage, your uh, metabolic rate, your body mass index, your muscle mass, your, your fat mass. That's a lot of that. Your body water percentage, bone mass, heart rate. It says, listen to this, if you're pregnant, they can measure... Your baby's weight as opposed to your weight? I think they just put a brick on the bottom myself, but that's what it said. 
And then you take an app and you connect it and you find all of this stuff. But ultimately, it tells you your weight. It measures that. And whether I want it measured or not, when I get on the scales, it's going to tell me where I am, not what I necessarily want it to say, right? It's going to tell me the reality, and then I make decisions, and those other things come into play, measure things to help that end result be better. And so what we did back in August, our staff, we took a, 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 few, a weekend, and we went to the camp that, that the marriage retreat's going to be at. We went there, and we spent a few days and we just we prayed over and we spent some time together thinking about this year, 2024, what God had for our church. And we went through a book, and this book was really neat. Uh, the idea of the book, it helps you to understand where you are. It's called Seven Practices of Effective Ministry. And the number one thing it said is clarify the win. In other words, how do you know you win as a church? You know, a lot of you like ball games. Right now, you'll be watching games today. Uh, watch and see if your team gets in the playoff or not. If you, you know, I'm a baseball guy. I like to watch baseball. Now they measure everything. It's like a smart scale if you watch a game. If you watch a baseball game, they will tell you the amount of rotations the ball takes when a pitcher pitches. They'll tell you how hard the balls hit, the, their velocity rate. They'll tell you how far it goes. It'll tell you how much a ball breaks. It's a curveball. I mean, all these crazy stats. They'll tell you all the things, the rotation and I'm like, bottom line, who wins at the end of the game, right? All those things are great, but ultimately, on the scoreboard, did you win or did you lose? And so we begin to pray, think about that question. What does it mean for our church to win, for you to win, for us to win? What does it mean that we, to have a good year? You know, this past year, we are so blessed. that we, we were looking, and, and, and I think I remember we had about 45, 46 people that were baptized this year in our church. I thought that was wonderful. I, we wanted to sneak about six more to get one a week, but we just missed. Uh, so if you want to get dunked, man, last week we should have done that just to get a number. I'm just kidding. And one thing we did talk about that, it's not just about numbers that makes us successful. It's not about, like, people coming, though that's part of it. But the things that we begin to pray over, we read the book, what does it mean for to win? One, we, to, to win as a church, as a believer, we want people to know Jesus in a very special way. That's the ultimate goal of anything we do. The reason we exist as a church is we want to know Jesus ourselves and want others to know Jesus. And once they know Jesus, we want them not only to know him, but then to grow in Jesus and be what he wants them to be. And then after we, they know and grow, then we want people to be able to show Jesus to others, to show them through the way they live, through what we do, through, through the way we pray over them. And all of those things come into play. So we want to know, grow, and show. You're going to hear that phrase a lot this year. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, the last Sunday this month, we're going to let you even say, I want to commit to that. We're not going to call you all year and ask you about it. We're going to ask you if you want to sign up. We're going to pray over you. Uh, the, we have a little card that talks about opportunities and what it means to know, grow, and show. And if you see the bulletin board we have out here, it has it on it and just ways to do that. And so today we're kind of just talking about the overall part of that. The next three weeks we're breaking down know, then grow, then show. And I just want to challenge all of us that we all can do better than we think we can, but also not in a way of one more thing to do, but in a way of this. The more I connect to Jesus, the more he's a part of my life, and the more naturally I begin to do things that he would want me to do. It's a natural flow. The more I know him, the more I want to know him, be like him. So the more I do that, the more I'm going to grow in him and learn, and the more I learn and grow in him, even without knowing it, I'm going to start showing him to other people through the way I live, through what I do. Some of it unintentionally, but a lot of it intentionally. It just all comes together. There's always three verses that always come to my mind or scripture when we talk about this. The first one we always refer in God's words as the great commandment, which is Mark 12. And this is the one that says, We love the Lord with all your God, love the Lord your God with your heart, strength, all your mind, all your. See, I forgot it. What am I doing? I got going. I, I talk too fast. You ever notice that just sometime? Anyway, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. You've heard me say it before. When I see that, I just see five areas of health. You know, you look at that with all your, uh, all your heart, your, your, it's like your emotion, your spirit, your intellect, your physical, your, your relational. It's all of these things that go into play. And that's knowing when we know him, it becomes a part of all of us. Then we have the great church in, in Acts 2, 
And it talks about what the church did. And, and as the church came around and got together, you see what they did. It says they, they devoted themselves. There's the idea of growing to the apostles' teaching, fellowship, breaking the bread of prayer. And, and you see they did these things, and the people came to know him as a result of that, as they just shared their heart and life. And then we have the Great Commission in Matthew 28. And it talks about we are going to all the world, making disciples and baptizing them and helping them come to know Jesus. So that's the basis of what God's called all of us to do. And what I'm excited about, we're going to do this together this year. Now, it would be so neat at the end of the year that we look around and say, did we do this? And say, this is how we want to do this. I, my goal, what I would love to see is everybody here today, if you don't know Jesus personally as your Savior, my prayer is today or some point this year that you would do that. And that you begin to say more than ever, I don't want to know, I want to grow in him, I want to develop. It starts, how do you start? Well, let's start with the Bible studies Wednesday nights, a great place to start. We have the Sunday school, Sunday morning with our class, it was a great place to start. And then we want to show that by being involved in the ministry. And if you've been around here a while, I talk a lot about a 360 card. You heard me mention it. And we have new ones made up. We're going to give a lot of those out this month too, at the end of, the, end of this month. And the idea of the 360 car, we want all of us to think about three people. The idea of 360, first look around you, think of three people in your life, and pray over, don't just pick a name, pray over the three people that God may want you to select this year, and pray over. And then as you pray for them, pray for them at least six days a week, miss zero opportunities to share his love with them. Now, this is what would be so great as we do this. That we know, let's say if 100 people say, I'm in, I'm going to do this challenge, I just want to be better this year. And say 100 people, we all commit to know Christ better. We all grow and we all pray over three people. Now think about a town of of 8,000 people or so that we are here in Mount Sterling. Let's say that we pray over that and say 100 of us praying over three people, even just one of those people come to know Jesus. And they have a family. That's 100 families. And 100 families are affected and they have families that are affected. So if we talk about changing our culture, it starts to loving the people next to us. It starts about praying for the people you see at school every day. It talks about, it's about praying for the people you work with, you work out with, people your kids go to school with. You know, I always say this, one of the greatest ministry opportunities is youth sports. Have you been on a travel team? If your kid's on a travel team, guess what? You're on a travel team. The parent caravan all over the country, wherever you go. Well, where else do you get that amount of hours to spend with people, loving them, talking to them, sharing your life? And what I've learned about that, you don't have to say too much. They begin to see who you are through your character. They see who you are through the way you handle when your kid plays or doesn't play, right? They see who you are when the team does well or does poorly. They see who you are when you're praying or somebody gets hurt or something happens, They see who you are when you make commitments. I can't do certain things. I do have church. I've got to do this. They see some of that. And then when things get tough, guess what? Guess who they're going to call on the team if something in their life starts to fall apart? They're calling you. They say, you know, there's something about you I've noticed on our travel teams together. I've noticed this. You don't come Sundays if we have so you come a little later. Why? So I made a commitment to church. Or, man, you have such a positive attitude and you pray and, and why do you do that? I know you just been through a hard time. Why don't you show that? Why, why do you handle that so well? Well, let me tell you. You know, I had this relationship with Jesus, and it's not just going to church, but he's changed my life. And I'm learning to grow in him, and the more I grow, he gives me opportunities. And, and, I, and then to say, hey, listen, I know we see each other every week, but I just want you to know, I pray for you six days a week. Some people love that. Some people get weird by that. It's hard to tell. I just want to pray for you every day. I think of you. And then, and then as you do that, they don't have to know you're praying for me. Then God begins to bring that together and we see it. And, and so it's a challenge. Now, I just want you to know this. When we set out on any challenge and we're going to do this, challenges do come to stop us. How many of you have ever said, I'm going to get healthier this year? And you do for a while. It don't have to be the beginning or any time. We all set goals. I'm going to eat better, do better, and we do for a while. But you know what happens? I'm going to go to church more. And then what happens is something happens. You can't go because somebody's sick. 
you, you pull a muscle and you've been doing so well. Or that chocolate bar was just too good. I should have brought, I got a three pound bar of chocolate for Christmas. Speaking of getting healthier, I don't know. Uh, that, that doesn't go together. I haven't eaten it yet. I, I've left it wrapped because once I unwrap it, it's gone. So it's still, it's still wrapped. But, but it's all about this. When we come to know Jesus, we, listen, we all start things, and it's okay. And we all do, do some successful, some not. So we've all been there. It's, we've all done that. But when it's about knowing Jesus, we God, I want to know you in a way. And challenges are coming. That's okay. Just when you mess up, get right back. You know, we had a Celebrate Recovery ministry at the church in, in Oklahoma. And one of the things they always did, they had an opportunity. If you wanted to come and, and struggle with addiction, and you can make a commitment. If, if nobody came forward, they always say, keep coming back. You may not be ready today, but you keep coming back. And, and sometime in life, we need to keep coming back. And you're going to have, so it says, it, there's a verse in John 10, 10. It says this. It says that the thief comes to steal, kill, destroy. Uh, but I come, Jesus comes to give life and life more abundantly. And, and it's one of those wonderful things that, that he does more abundantly. And he does these things for us. And now the idea of that, the idea of still, you know what the word is for still in the Greek? Stealth. It's like a stealth mode. When most of us mess up, we didn't do it on purpose many times, right? Satan comes to steal. It's a steal. You don't even realize the negative path you start to go down. It's like the stealth mode. If you have a stealth fighter, stealth jet, the idea is the quietness there they come into. And, and as they're coming, so people can't hear it. It says to steal, to kill. That means just that. Kill means to, to be done with or to sacrifice. And this is what I believe. Satan is willing to sacrifice all of us to get his message across. He don't care about us. He wants to destroy us. And then the last part then, to destroy, is simply that. It means to cancel out, to remove, all of those things. But I love the next part. When Jesus said, I'm going to have life and life more abundantly or to the full, that word means more than, beyond what is anticipated, exceeding accept, uh, expectation going past the expected limit. That regardless of what Satan does, God will do more than that. He'll go past the accepted limit to give us more we ever thought possible. So in other words, we win. How does the church win? How do we win? By letting God have more access to our life than Satan. It's that simple. Every day we have choices to make. And God, today I'm allowing you to have access to my spirit and my life to do this. But you're going to have challenges. We love challenges. We love athletes who talk about it. Kobe Bryant had a great quote one time. He said, everything negative, he said, pressure, challenges, is all opportunity for me to rise. I saw one time a promise keeper said, when opposition arises, look for opportunity. Franklin D. Roosevelt, I put opportunity, opportunity. It's supposed to be opposition. Either one, whatever works for you. And then Franklin D. Roosevelt, great quote, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. And then I saw this one the other day. Everyone wants to live on top of the mountain, but all the happiness and growth occurs while you're climbing it. Now, years ago, some of you remember the speech that Coach Jim Valvano made in 1993 at the ESPYs. If you ever watched that, it's one of those motivating speech. Jim Valvano passed away of cancer uh, just shortly after that. During that speech, he, he had tumors all over his body. It was not a good day for him, but he gave a fantastic speech. And in it, he told a simple story. Uh, it was really funny, and he said what it was, he had read a book one time uh, by, by one of the great coaches, Vince Lombardi, and the book was called uh, Commitment to Excellence. And he said in the book, Vince Lombardi tells it when the first time that he went uh, to his team, the Green Bay Packers, and he went out at that time, the Green Bay Packers were not a very good team. They had been losing a lot, and then he took over, and he went in to talk to them, and he said, my, Vince Lombardi's first speech, he said, he went in, and I told him, listen, you can be winners. He said, I waited, though. He, Vince Lombardi waited until like three minutes to come in. He said, listen, we're going to be successful. You can be winners, and here's how you do it. He said, there's three things you have to do. He said, if you do things in this order, you practice your family, your religion, and the Green Bay Packers. You do those things, we're going to win football games. So Jim Valvano said, here, I'm 21 years old. I play basketball at Rutgers. I was now the coach of the freshman basketball team at Rutgers University. He said, I was 21. My players were 19. And I'm the coach. 
And he said, I, I come walking into the locker room. I said, I've been practicing this speech already. All right, you, you, you've got it. You've got family, your religion, and Rutgers basketball. He said, I've been practicing and practicing. And he said, I finally get all my team in. They're in the locker room. I do a Vince Lombardi. I wait. I don't go at 15 minutes. I, don't, I wait till three minutes. I come rushing in. He said, as I did, I hit my arm on the door. <laughs> he said, I couldn't already get in. I finally got in, and I looked at my team. Rutgers, be ready. He said, I've been proud. Here we go. We can win this year. Be successful. There's three things you focus on. Your, your, your family, you got it, your religion, and the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> I mean, Rutgers basketball, wrong thing. And, and then one of, the, one of the kids that were actually there, now his son is, is older, and his son said his dad told him the rest of the story. He's not only did that happen, when he left the locker room, they, they get out, they walk to the gym, and Jim Valvano runs and jumps to kick the door open. It was locked. <laughs> and he fell on thud right back on the ground. His very first great speech and great ball game. He said he gets up, he waited two minutes, the janitor opened the door, they went out, and they won by one point, and they never looked back. And he said he lived the life there. He kept going regardless of what it was. I love that story, but here's the truth. When we say we're going to do something big or great, opposition is going to come. Just get ready. It's okay. That's okay. We know that, but let's continue. I want to talk just a little bit as we I just want to set some of this up today. The next week, again, we'll continue on each part of this. We'll talk a little bit about Joshua. I know the youth are talking about Joshua. We're going to talk some about Joshua for the first part of the year here. Joshua was the man that God had called. Moses was a great leader. And at some point in history and in time, as Moses led the people, God had given Moses his dream to get to the promised land. They crossed through the Red Sea. Then he, get, he let him see the land, but Moses never got to go in it. So Joshua was one of the men that Moses began to raise up. Joshua and Caleb were two great leaders under Moses. They learned a lot. And, and it came a time, and I'm just going to talk about little lessons they learned that we can learn as we approach this year in a little new way. Joshua knew a couple of things. This is the first thing Joshua knew. He knew that faithfulness to God is the key to the presence of God. In other words, knowing. That's the know. Now, Numbers 14, verse 5. Moses was sending people over. This is the new promised land. I want you to go take a look at it. He had these 12 spots. I want you to go look to, to get us see what you think. Come tell me. And, and the other spies came back, 10 of them. They said how bad it was. And then beginning with verse 5, then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the assembly of the congregation of the people of Israel and Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jenufana. They were ready to go, uh, who were among those who spied out the land, tore their clothes, and said to the congregation of the people of Israel. And it was all the other ones said how bad it was, how horrible it was. And here's what they said. The land which we pass through to spy it out is an exceedingly good land. Love that. If the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their protection is removed from them, and the Lord is with us, so do not fear them. Then all the congregation said to stone them with stones, but the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of meeting to all the people of Israel. Listen, opposition came quick. It will in our life. When we start to do something good, it comes. But see what, the, the key with Joshua and Caleb, they didn't look at the enemy that was there. They looked at what is God telling us here? He's not telling us when I have opposition. He said, the land I'm sending you to is good. And so what Joshua and Caleb did, they looked at what God said. They said, God is right. This is good. It's flowing with milk and honey. And I'm sure there was chocolate flowing through there somewhere. I don't know how that worked. But said so the idea, what God said was good. He said, he didn't say there wouldn't be opposition. He said, the land is good. And, he, and this is what it says. He will take his hand off of them and put it on us and protect us from them. But they didn't listen. But see, Joshua and Caleb, they knew a couple of things here. You know, when they knew God, they know God. They, they didn't focus on the enemy. They focused on what God said. And what they found was what God said was true. If they knew him so much, had a confidence in what he was doing. Then, another thing we learned, Joshua knew, God's spirit in us begins to open up opportunities for us. 
So it came a time as Joshua continued to be faithful that God began to see something in him and Moses saw something in him that he was going to be the next leader. And that's the growing part. This is what it says in Numbers 27, 18. The Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay your hand on him. Make him stand before Eliezer. I love all these names. Ellie was calling. The priest and all the congregation. And you shall commission him in their sight. You shall invest him with some of your authority, some of your authority that all the congregation of the people of Israel may obey. And Moses did as the Lord commanded. He took Joshua and made him stand before the priest and, and the whole congregation laid their hands on him and commissioned him as the Lord directed Moses. See, listen. Joshua knew God. He did what was right, and then he grew in him. Moses was the leader above Joshua. Joshua, I'm helping you see this. And he commissioned him, and he helped him, and, and he had favor with Moses and favor with the people, and he began to do it. See, I always think back to when I first was in ministry. I told you my very first position full-time was a, a youth pastor in Shreveport, Louisiana, Billy Franks. I, I know I talk about Billy a lot, but he was such an important part of my life. I remember when I was about to leave and do, go to another place, Billy told me, he said, Dave, I've taught you things that you've learned from and I appreciate. He said, now what I want you to do, when you go somewhere else, learn from them too. You're going to find that as God teaches you circumstances, God teaches you things in each place you are to help you form who you are in your own way to pastor and minister. He said, learn from each place you are, good, bad, learn from it. And then as you go, and that's what Joshua did with Moses. He saw the good and the bad. Moses couldn't actually see the promised land because the people rebelled. He saw it, but he couldn't go into it. And Joshua was the one that was leading him across, which brings us to the next thing. God's presence allows us to lead other people. And and, and that's the show part. Because Joshua was faithful. You know, it's easy to make a big, huge decision. It's different when you carry that out every day, right? We make this big commitment. Hey, I'm going to go to this college, and it's awesome. You get to college, and guess what? You actually got to study. It was a lot more fun when I said I got admitted, when I I got accepted. Now that I accepted, you mean I actually got to work? Yeah, that's how that works. We love the big commitments. Hey, God's with you. Oh, we're going to take over the land. That's great. And they told the people. I mean, the people, let's look back, a little flashback to the children of Israel. They're, They're walking. They see the Red Sea, and they see Pharaoh's men behind them, and they see the sea wall up. Imagine, just think about this for a moment. And they walked through it. And the sea came back and destroyed everybody behind them. And then not long later, I don't think God's with us. Really? Did did you just forget what happened? But we begin to look at the negative. We forget what God does and what he says. And that leads us to the last verse here. Joshua 1 says, after the death of Moses. Now, Joshua, he didn't know how to lead without Moses, right? I mean, that was his guy. The servant of Moses, the Lord said to Joshua, Moses is a, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready. I just love that part. Now, Joshua, it's your time. You're getting ready. I brought you up for this moment. You went into the promised land to see the good of the land. You were faithful. Moses called you to be his successor. And now it's your time. I want you to get ready, and you and the people, and you're going to cross the river. That's the show part. See, Joshua knew God, and he knew the things of God was fled and make a decision to look at what God said, not the opposition or the enemy. Then he grew in God and grew and drew closer to Moses, and he watched God work in the life of the people, and God lead them through a difficult time, and he remained faithful. And now when it was ready, he said, now Joseph, I mean, Joseph, Joshua, whatever your name is, buddy, uh, it's your time. (laughs) I get those names. It's your time, Joshua, now to step up. And I want you to go. And I love it. When you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan into the land I'm about to give you to the Israelites, I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. 
We'll look at that next part here, verse 4. Your territory. He began to tell him where it's in. Look at verse 5. No one. We need to know verse 5. This is for all of us. When God, when we know him, we grow in him, we're showing. This is what God tells us. No one. It doesn't say most people. Everybody except that one guy. Everybody except that woman at work or that guy at work or, or everybody except no one. I just love that. Will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land. I swore to their ancestors to give them. In other words, Joshua, I've got you. In this new year, I think he's got challenges for all of us. But I want you to know that no one, no one will be able to stand up against us. Because God is greater than anything we face. So as we think of this year ahead of us, I want to encourage you today to say, God, I'm willing to commit to you my life, my family, who I am, what I do. I'm, it's yours. Just help me to be faithful as we, as we know him. So today I'm going to ask you, do you know him? Maybe you've been to church and you're showing up and you're doing things. Have you ever really just said, God, I want to know you and accepted him into your life and made him Lord of your life? And then if you've done that, have you really begun to grow in him and become the things he wants you to be? And then are you starting to show? You may be at one of those three facets right now. You don't know him yet, but you want to. You just got to know him. Now, how do you grow? And then how do you show? I just want today maybe a great way to kick off this new year at church is to come as we sing and to say, Lord, I want to know you. I want to make sure that my life is lived for you. So, see, remember back to the smart scales I told you about? And I learned it's not smart to stand on them. That's what I've learned already this year. But one thing about it, even the smart scales, they don't measure anything if the battery's not in it. So I'm going to win. I'm going to do great. You won't if the battery's not in it. I'm going to have a great year in God. You won't if God's not with you. If you don't do the things of God, if you don't ask God into your life, if I don't, I can say, I don't do great things, but I don't spend time with the Lord every day. I'm not going to do much. Oh, one day my family's going to be this. Well, not if we don't spend time praying for them. And not if we don't lead them well. Not if we don't make a commitment. And as Joshua made those commitments, God honored it. And as we make these commitments to the Lord, may he honor those things. This is what I, I saw. As I was reading, I just had a little thought. Because Joshua positioned himself with God. God put him in a position to make a difference among people. So when we position ourselves with God, he will put us in a position to make a difference. May we position ourselves with him today. Father, we love you today. God, thank you for this new year coming. Thank you, God, that you allowed us to be here today. And, Lord, help us as we see what it means to know, grow, show, that we can do that in an incredible way. But I thank you for the people who went ahead of us. I thank you for the Moseses in our own life, people who led, people who showed us what to do and how to do. And, God, I pray we would look at this year and know it's going to be a great year, not because there won't be any opposition, but because we see you above any opposition, that we know, God, you can do things in our life that we can't do, but we trust you. Like Joshua, may we know you. Because we know you, may we see the goodness of the land and not worry about the opposition around. Because we know you, help us to grow in you and commit to, to being what you want. Then we begin to show you the way we live and what we do. Jesus, we love you. We thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. If you would stand with us today, I want to invite you to come. I just want to pray and say, God, I want this to be my life in this 2024. I want to be able to do that and, and allow you to take over all parts of me.
You know, it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing that the God of the universe chooses us to be a part of the plan he has. I just love that. And so just know that as we connect with him, that's part of allowing that to take place. And I just pray that for all of us this year. We have such a connection. We know him in a way better than we ever have that we can grow and show him individually but as a church. I think as a whole church, as we do this and we just say, God, we want to be used by you and follow you. I think it's amazing what we will see him do. Again, thank you so much for being here today. Remember a lot of the announcements this week, Wednesday night. Again, we'll have our meal at 545. If you haven't been, I really encourage you to come. It's really, the meal is so nice. And we ask you, if you can, about $3 a person, no more than 10 a family. If you want to give a donation, that just helps a little bit to offset the cost. And if you don't have it, we always say that's okay, too. We just want you to come. 545 to about 630. At 645, we, we split up for our groups our youth, or children, nursery, we have all of that taken care of that night as well. And I, I encourage you to come. And again, we do the men's and women's study starting this week, and it's a great time to start. Also, thank you for giving. You know, this past uh, few weeks, we talked about if you just want to give a little extra toward the, toward the fund, toward, the, you know, toward our uh, just general funds. We put a lot in. Our offering last week was over $40,000. So that's just you giving. Hey, that is something to clap about. But I just thank you for that. Because as you know, I, I'm not, I don't like to talk about money a lot, but I think part of our 
discipleship to the Lord is to do that. And so as we honor him through giving in so many ways, and I just appreciate you giving and helping in that regard last week. It does help us. as We put a lot into this building this year and we'll do a lot more this coming year through ministry and different things. Uh, speaking of that, of course, our offering box is here too out there. Thank you for coming. Remember the marriage retreat, help with pickleball, all those things. Father, we love you, and God, as we leave here today, may we do so just a renewed sense that we can know you, grow in you, and show you, and be everything you want. Love you. Amen. Thank you for coming.